dead silent. One over here. <laughs> Thank you. 
few other things that came up. Um, the things that didn't get disbanded, which um, included the quarters of the units, case of the NCB, the Guardian of the Um People also said work to up future research opportunities and the wider role of the um, in terms of Recording, so just start when you're ready. So, uh, together as a team, um, we just presented a workshop um, for women's voices where um, we just really gave a platform um, for women here to speak about their personal experiences, personal work experiences, their experiences of continuity or lack of continuity, and um, the difference that I'm made to them. So, do you want to just teach them a bit about what you so, yeah, I'm Lauren, I'm a birth doula and a hemibirth teacher and um, I'm a mother of four and my first three births I kind of felt the continuity care was completely lacking so with my fourth I made sure that it was there by using a doula in the home birth and kind of stayed in the system all together and it completely changed how I view birth so direct comparison, you know, I can see the importance of it completely. <laughs> Um, yeah, I'm Kathy and I run a home support network in the Greater Manchester Borough and uh, I ended up uh, free birthing my two daughters um, because I just couldn't um, contemplate um, a stranger turning up in labour um, and I would have liked to have continuity but it wasn't an option for me and um, it was better to birth alone than have someone turn up to the I just didn't uh, get on with it all. And I, I had two previous traumatic caesareans and then I went on to have to have a natural birth. And during that pregnancy, up to 36 weeks, I hadn't seen the same person once, and there were lots of personal views and experiences brought to my table that influenced the choices that those made about my birth. At 37 weeks, I was okay to his wife. Um, to support my choices that was going to advocate for me and she just believed in me, she never doubted me, she just gave me as much information as I could, as she could to make informed decisions about my birth and it was just so empowering and I went on and I had the birth I wanted um, and I just think that whilst a lot of women receive fantastic physical care Continuity offers a care that meets their physical and their emotional needs, and that is a gold standard of care that every woman deserves, and that is what we should all unite and really push for. So, um, our workshop explored um, team as an organisational model for case aid and delivery, and um, I think the small group work at the end generally was um, very positive about the aspects of TEAL, which is self management, the support, the wholeness. Um, and felt that it could offer a really good structure for um, new organisations and new models and new case study models up and coming. Um, I think some of the midwives voiced concerns that they didn't feel fully equipped and would need to build their confidence in terms of um, self-management, how to, to work with their own caseload, and also how to juggle, not juggle, but how to fit real life around, uh, around their, their work. Um, a few other issues came up which weren't uh, related to, to TEAL but were worth mentioning. Um, ensuring that all models of case loading are inclusive, um, so for all women across the board, and also that they're flexible enough to allow uh, midwives in different situations, different times of their career to, to, to case load as well. Um, there were concerns about, as, as often there are, about caseloads becoming too large and how financial constraints could really um, jeopardise um, any caseload models. Um, there were a couple of points about um, because TEAL organisations have the potential to look um, maybe a little less structured um, than traditional NHS organisations. It's how the government governance structure plays out within, within such an organisation. And we were able to do a bit about that. Um, yeah, generally there was some good discussion. I think um, the audience was really interested to know how the money share, how it worked, which was which is obviously an ongoing um, discussion. Um, and but thank you to everyone for participating. Um, so, uh, really interesting interactive workshop. Um, I 
I think one of the big messages is that for particularly for midwives at the front line, they're kind of like, well, what is positioning? How does it work? You know, what do you need? What qualifications do you need to have to be a, 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 a maternity commissioner? Which is really a very um, insightful and interesting question to ask. Um, and uh, there's something about making sure that our the commissioners that we have actually have walked in the shoes of women and uh, and those who are providing the service, you know, doing shadowing type uh, work with commissioners so that they can really understand the everyday experience. Um, there was definitely a really strong resonance with the fact that we need to measure outcomes around staff wellbeing as well as uh, patient uh, and women and family experience <coughs> and uh, outcome measures. So that was a, seemed to be quite a strong message from people um, and I think probably the, the third thing that was a really kind of like light bulb moment certainly from my point of view and I think it resonated really strongly with the room was that actually at the moment we're kind of measuring lots of away from outcomes like cesarean rate and hold, you know, punishing people for not achieving targets around that instead of rewarding people for healthy, uh, for, for normal births. So, you know, kind of like, you know, there's something about turning all these negatives into a positive and focusing on what we want to happen and not what we don't want to happen. Okay. Right, um, this is the feedback from the education workshop. We started by looking at the ARN vision and then we went on to identify the problems we were going to deal with of which a big one was the gap between the ideology within which midwives are educated and the disillusionment they hit when they're in clinical practice. There was much more of working problems for management which include moving midwives around to plug the gaps in the service and the pressure to tick increasing numbers of boxes which leads to a situation where midwives just can't make eye contact with women. The workshop members had a tremendous resources between them. There were lots of people now providing contributory care and a great deal of eagerness to help others to learn and not to limitations. So the answers we came up with in terms of education for students, it was felt to be all important that students learn from those who are doing contributory care, placements in the NHS and independent midwives, and if that is not possible, then attaching students to individual women, which is now required for midwifery education in Australia. Um, in some places, teachers can carry caseloads, as happens in New Zealand, and we would very much welcome a path into midwifery education for women with experience um, who have been um, support workers or have been otherwise involved as peer supporters or breastfeeding supporters. There was a need for students to be able to actually practice in the community, and this was felt to be very limited. And as a profession, a need for us to control our own education and our own registration. In terms of clinical midwives, um, there was an identified great need to provide better pastoral care, including widespread use of the potential of social media. And there was a long discussion about care for the carers. Um, we learned a lot from independent midwives in terms of support, collaboration, and networking. And we've heard of one um, university in Australia which is now running an NSC program in continuity of care. The last area which was seen as very important was professional development of our leaders. A great deal of steam was let off in terms of the shortcomings of the NSC, not crucifying our leaders and our leaders um, situation not been understood by clinical midwives and if you harness that scene we could move mountains. There was identified to be a real need for midwives on her scores who would mostly not just be represented by their nursing. A need for support and understanding of what senior management do and a need to analyse and bridge the gap between the midwifery ideology and the economic imperatives which run trust. There was thought to be a crying need for a government minister for babies and families. And we thought Julie Cumberland would be crying. <laughs> <laughs>